Hey, good morning. It's devotion time. Our last devotion picked up in chapter 4, verse 33, and then the sermon for this past weekend followed after that, and then the, your small group curriculum is going to cover the text that immediately follows that. So our devotion plan brings us now to chapter 5 of John. After this, a Jewish festival took place, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. By the Sheep Gate in Jerusalem, there's a pool called Bethesda in Aramaic, which has five colonnades. Within these lay a large number of the disabled, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and realized he had already been there a long time, he said to him, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? This is fascinating because I think the question is genuine. Do you want to get well? I think that it's a genuine question because sometimes we don't want to get well. Sometimes we'd rather stay there in our pity party by the pool in our paralysis. At least our sin, at least our brokenness, at least it's comfortable. I've seen this tendency in Christians where we want to just sit and lick our wounds in perpetuity. Do you even want to get well? Because you know what happens when you get well, right? You know what happens when this man who is no longer paralyzed is able to get up and walk? I mean, there's going to be stuff expected of him. He might have to contribute in the military. He might have to get a job, serve. You know, it's so much easier to just lay there by the pool. There are worse ways to spend your life lying by a pool. There are people who spend good money just to do exactly that even. But this man's paralysis had become his comfort zone. Do you want to get well? I know what it's like to be stricken with grief and to prefer to stay there because it is just easier to surrender to it. Do you want to get well? I know what it's like to struggle with substances. Do you want to get well? Because you know that when you do, you're going to be put to work, man. So answer the question, do you want to get well? If your Bible translation has a different rendering of verse 3, there are some manuscripts that include the words, waiting for the moving of the water because an angel will go down into the pool from time to time and stir the water. The, then the first one who got into the water was, uh, after the water was stirred, recovered from whatever ailment he had. There's this mythology around this water. Not all the ancient manuscripts of the text include this, but what matters is the question that Jesus asked. Do you want to get well? Or would you rather stay in your pity party? Would you rather stay in your pain? He is the redeemer, right? Doesn't that mean that you're redeemed? Doesn't that mean that your past doesn't define your future? That you can get up, you can pick up your mat, and you can walk into something new. By all means, take the time that you need to heal, but 38 years, come on, man. There are people dying and going to hell every day around us. We are on the front lines of the mission of God in one of the most lost cities in the world. It's time to get up. It's time to get well. It's time to move forward on mission. And in my experience, what you'll find is that as you get up, as you walk, as you start evangelizing again, you start to see God use your past pain in a beautiful way. I've never seen so many people come to Christ as I have through the story of my son who passed away. What might God do through your past pain and how might that bring healing to you? So, excitedly answer the question, do you want to get well? Let's get up together. Let's go light up the darkness.